Apostle Paul selects his wording when he writes to the early churches in those New Testament days. He has a wonderful way of, of turning the phrase or of picking just the right illustration to make his point. He is a genius as a wordsmith. <clears throat> Take, for example, the scripture passage that Marilyn read for you today from 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. Paul says this, or Paul writes this, uh, we now have the light of Christ shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. I love the image of fragile clay jars. Clay was the common household cooking and storage utensil that was used in all of the Jewish homes in the New Testament days. Uh, it was just one of those items that would probably be a, a part of your own kitchen set, except we go by names of Tupperware or KitchenAid or Cousinart or Faberware or Baggies. Yeah. They were used for all that kind of a thing. Your child would have carried their lunch to school with them in one of those fragile clay pots. They, are, they were the most useful and common item in the kitchen, even though they were quite fragile. But as we think of those fragile clay jars, I think Paul was really drawing our attention to a bigger picture when he called we Christians fragile clay jars. I think it's very possible that what he was really trying to define was we Christians as cracked pots. I really do. I think that maybe what he was trying to say to us was that we are all damaged goods. We all have our foibles, our idiosyncrasies, our dysfunctions. It's amazing to me that we are able to get anything really done as a human race if you sit down and think about it for very long. But Paul points out God in his great wisdom has chosen us. He has chosen us to carry the light of Christ, to carry the message of the good news, to carry Jesus Christ in our lives and into the lives of others. God has chosen us to do that. I think that is awesome. It says a lot more about God's gift of forgiveness and foresight than it says anything about our abilities or capabilities or inabilities. Now there is this beautiful uh, uh, parable of a cracked pot that I would like for Nancy and Debbie to share with you right now. A water bearer in India had two large pots, one hung on each end of a pole which she carried across her neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream to the mistress's house. And the cracked pot only arrived half For a full two years, the spoon out daily. The bearer delivered only one and a half pots daily water. The bearer delivered only one and a half pots daily water. The perfect pot was proud of its accomplishment. And perfect, perfect to the end for which she was made. But the poor cracked pot went ashamed of its own imperfection, poor and miserable, that it was able to accomplish only half that it was able to do. After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, two years, it spoke what to the water there when they by the stream. It spoke. I am so ashamed of myself. I want to apologize to you. Why? asked the mother. Warming the beautiful wild flowers on the side of the sun. Warming the 
year. But at the end of the trail, it still felt badly. But at the end of the trail, it leaked. It still felt it had to flow. Because it's so we did. And I could apologize to the bear. The bear is such a hot bear. Notice that those were flowers only on your side of the path, but not on the other path side. like that and scripture passages in mind, I want to, for us to understand that today's sermon has a simple goal. And that goal is to remind us that God is our heavenly Father of forgiveness. And He wants us to live lives as His forgiven children. We tend to forget that just about every day of our lives. We live quiet lives of desperation, and I think we do that because we carry around with us too much unresolved unforgiveness. And that just ruins and spoils what our life could really be like in the Lord. I'm going to put another image up on the screen right now of a logo. Let's have the next slide, Larry. That is the logo of our youth ministry, the law. Uh, that was a logo that was designed, oh, I suppose, 10 or 11 years ago, more than that maybe even, when the youth program was housed up on the third floor of this building, just right behind me here on the third floor. And that was the highest part of the campus at that time, and therefore the loft. And the name just seemed to fit pretty good. I arrived here um, almost nine years ago as the youth ministry was moving from the third floor because they had outgrown the third floor, down to the first floor. And they took over the old fellowship hall here for a good number of years. And I thought it was a bit strange for them to, to have the, the name Loft when they were on the third floor, but they kept that name Loft when they were down in the basement. Didn't make much sense to me until I started to understand the story behind that logo. Well, as you now know, our youth ministry is... Uh, housed in the third floor story of the Wesley Center, which is now the highest part of our campus. And therefore, the word loft certainly fits there quite appropriately. However, and this is the story behind the logo, there is usually more to a logo than just the logo itself. And this logo has a powerful meaning that can accommodate itself in any location, anywhere be it a loft overlooking the Grand Canyon, or be it in a cave a hundred feet underneath the earth. The reason is because of the, the message of the loft is this, the Lord offers forgiveness today. So that message can be shared anywhere at any time in any place. As a matter of fact, it is a wonderful message for youth of all ages, and that includes all of us, to remember all the time. The Lord offers forgiveness today. You know, the world can be a pretty difficult place to live in. We get beat up by our own problems, or like a, a boat in the midst of a storm being tossed back and forth, we face that same kind of turmoil 
by the problems of other people. When that happens, we begin to find it rather difficult to see the glory and the hope of the Lord at work in our lives and around us. The crack in our fragile pot that we call life often gets bigger and bigger and bigger and there seems like there may be no opportunity to repair it ever. But the Apostle Paul gives us some words of encouragement in that first scripture passage that Marilyn shared with you, again from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We have these words. Paul writes, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven by despair. We are, haunt, we are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. I like that. We are never abandoned by God. I think what he is saying is that with God on our side and Jesus Christ living within us, we can overcome and, and, and come out on top of any of our problems victorious. How many of you believe that? Now, I'm going to say this to you. I got about two-thirds of you raised your hands right there. And I'm going to say, you know, in a public setting such as this, in a worship setting where we've just had some beautiful music and some, some rousing spiritual moments, I, I think you're going to say yes, that you can be, agree with that. But I'm also going to say that there's plenty of dark nights of your soul in which you're not going to be in agreement with that. And one of the reasons is because you live with this sense of unforgiveness stewing in your life. You just can't believe that you can live a life victoriously because you continue to let the problems of yesterday affect your relationship with Christ today. When the world beats us up, it loves to uh, plant in our hearts a false message that maybe we're just not worthy enough to be forgiven by God. But that just isn't the case. To counter that uh, attack, I think we need to turn to the scriptures for truth in all things. For example, two scriptures have come together for me that have revolutionized my thinking and my, uh, and my being. They are the two scriptures that Marilyn shared, uh, the, the, third and the, four, uh, the second and the third scriptures. Those two out of the Old Testament that have spoken just radically to me over time. Every once in a while, a scripture passage jumps off the page and changes my outlook completely. It's a God thing when that happens. And I hope that you are reading the Bible often enough and regularly and thoroughly enough for the same thing to happen to you. It's a God thing when we let the word of the scriptures jump off the page and plant themselves deep in our hearts. So it, it was somewhere and somehow in, in something that I read once that these two scripture passages came together in one sentence. And that sentence is this. God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more. That's a powerful, powerful statement. When I heard those words, they just impacted me. They shook me to my core. And so I had to race out and find out what context I would find those in the Bible. And I found them. The first part of that is in Psalm 103. It's actually part of a, a larger, more beautiful statement even. And it is for this. For as high as the heavens are above the earth. Now think about that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's pretty high. So great is our God's love for us. And then here's from earlier, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. So far does he remove our transgressions. And then the second part of that scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 43, and it is